Salut! My name is Elena from Elena the Expat and in this episode we are exploring yet another very cool place in Moldova, the Saharna Monastery. We got so lucky with the weather. This is basically the last sunny day in November. Uh, the whole last weeks it was just super gloomy, raining all day, and now you have the sunny, a bit windy, but really great day. One of the first things that we want to check out here that really caught our attention is the chapel at the top of the hill. So Saharna is one of those monasteries which is located in a valley. And check this out, I bet the view is just fantastic. To have this weather on a day like Saturday is really a blessing. We will fully take advantage of it. But this hike is pretty intense. <laughs> they like their steps in Saharna. Look at this amazing view. The hike was definitely worth it. Right there is the Nistra River and everything on the other side of the river is Transnistria. And if you look to the right, you can see the monastery. Uh, the one that I promised located in a valley. Looks really nice. There is a cross here. That's the chapel that we saw from the bottom. And here is this majestic monastery. I heard that the legend of uh, this monastery being founded is related to the Virgin Mary. Hence this um, icons inside of the chapel. I think this is Saint Peter. This is Virgin Mary with Jesus Christ. As we descended into the valley, we can hear the waterfalls better and better. This is one of the uh, monasteries that does have also a river nearby, hence the waterfalls. They are very uh, tame and small by international standards and you'll see them shortly. Uh, but once you're here, why not explore them too? It's called the Holy Trinity. And even by coming in here, I can see that it's heavily decorated. You have all these illustrations with Jesus Christ. Uh, there are plenty of buildings here. Probably some of them are close to the public because the monks live in here and we don't want to disturb them. You can see the premises, lots and lots of buildings. Looks very nice. And we are going to this church or monastery up here. I'm not sure that we got into the right church because there was a baptizing there and I decided to give people some privacy. It's a little bit confusing, there are no signs here, so you're just wandering around the premises hoping that you will find something. And there are also no guides here, so you're basically on your own. The only thing that I've read about this is that the monastery is around 500 years old. Saint Mary appeared to one of the monks here and he decided to build a monastery on the place where he thought he saw or he had this vision of the uh, Saint Mary. So the monastery is here. <laughs> one level up from this church is the graveyard and right in front of it they have a new church being built. Um, they haven't allowed us to film inside because it's not ready yet so obviously they want to put their best foot forward. 
One of the trends that I saw in many monasteries is that they have a little zoo with birds, something to keep the small ones occupied. So while well, the kids have a look at the birds here, I think the parents can have a little bit of peace of mind and explore the premises. On your way to the old monasteries, there is the spring with water and it's been sanctified, so it's basically like holy water. Here is a cup for drinking. I don't think I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, I'm rather finicky about this stuff. We are going to the waterfalls now. The temperature dropped because we are in the valley and it's very uh, dark and gloomy here. There's basically no sun because of the trees. So it's damp, it is cold. I hope we'll make it a very quick trip. And I hope the waterfalls will be worth it. So check this out. Apparently they have two monasteries. The first one is the new one that we saw and then they have a monastery inside of the uh, hills. It's called Monastire Rupestre. Now I'm pretty pumped up to see the monastery in the hill. It's supposed to be much older than we saw just now. So let me show you with the flash what we have here. So on the bottom are all of these icons. The majority of them is Jesus Christ and uh, Saint Mary. And you can see like wall to wall. I would say probably we have 50 of them. And then you have these places for lighting the candles. Although somewhere on the premises they said do not light candles unless you're gonna watch them. So I think they're just lit in uh, maybe, you know, a couple of times per day and somebody watches that the place doesn't catch fire. Then more icons. And you can see that in the wall here this white things. These are pieces of paper on which people write their wishes and they put them in a wall uh, hoping that they will come true. Unfortunately, the wishes after some time, they do fall on the ground. So here you see like it's sort of a, you know, looking like trash, not, not very clean and people are walking in it so it turns into a uh, mosh. So it's a super interesting place, but if you have claustrophobia, that will be a bit challenging for you, for sure. At the beginning, I have to be honest, it was a little bit scary. Like you're going, you don't know what's expecting you and it just gets smaller and smaller. But that was, um, I could work with that. This looks like a monastery where somebody is still living. I'm not gonna go very close cause I wanna respect the privacy, but um, it has windows, uh, it has bars so nobody breaks in. Looks like um, maybe it's being used. Let's continue checking out the case. I only see icons right now. I'm curious whether people leave them here or it's left by the monks. And we can go on this road here and see if there are any more. It's too narrow to go down, but it feels like it's another dwelling for a, a single monk, probably. To enter here, you have to crawl on the ground. So this is some sort of you know, humility uh, that the monk has to show when, whenever they are going inside of their home. To be honest, this whole situation is very confusing because there's a lot of water, there's no official indication of where is the pathway and you can see that we are basically on an island surrounded by water and you just have to figure out your way. So like infrastructure wise, this place is a mess. I can imagine that it's really beautiful, especially during the summer when everything is green to kind of explore the place and I'm very thankful that it's been raining so there's a lot of water in the waterfall but I mean come on I can see how this twig breaks or I slip on it the tree has fallen nobody cleared it out luckily for me it's not such a big problem but yeah I can imagine people for whom this could be a problem uh, we have to cross the river like the fifth time and every time when I get on the slippery rocks, I'm like, is this going to be the time when I slip and fall? I hope not because it's pretty cold outside. This is the famous Saharna waterfall. 
<laughs> I'm joking, guys. Obviously, it's not it. So this is the famous Saharna waterfall. No, I'm kidding. This is the famous Saharna waterfall. This is the famous Saharna waterfall. Look at it. It's a thing of beauty. It was absolutely worth coming here. That's definitely not Niagara Falls. But I think for Moldovan standards and the fact that we are mostly kind of flat, a flat country, I think this is pretty damn good. And I really like that the surrounding, this rock formations, overgrown with trees and weeds, just create this very mystical and beautiful atmosphere. Like it is a thing, you know, from a fairy tale for me. It is absolutely worth it. And you imagine coming here in the summer and you can actually have a dip in the lake the water looks murky now, but I'm sure that in the summer it's a little bit more clear. And you freshen up under this waterfall, you know. I think that's, uh, that's a nice experience. Fast forward to our next location, Han Luhangano. This is a famous restaurant in the Lalova village. It's about 30 minutes from the place where we were and they have the most amazing food. Let's check this out together. It looks like a medieval for fortress. Oh, just so pretty. There seems to be an event inside, but I do hope they have a place for us. Unfortunately, the plan with Hanoi Hanganu fell through. They had a birthday party, so we were not able to come and eat there. Well, when you're traveling, things like this happen. We went to the next place, a restaurant called Doi Hai Duch. It's another pretty popular restaurant. Hopefully, fingers crossed, they will have places for us. Their food is really good. It's traditional Moldovan food, and that's exactly what I need today because I haven't eaten a bite since the morning. I only had a coffee, so I'm just famished. <laughs> escape all the weddings, birthday parties, baptizing. Uh, but the good thing is that we have this music for free. So uh, <laughs> I think once we we'll have our food, we might start uh, dancing, right? We decided to go with the uh, renowned Purkar wines, which is going to be poured in this Chateau Vartelli glasses. The first thing that I got is Zama. This is a traditional Moldovan soup, but this restaurant has a twist on theirs. It's with quail instead of chicken. It's very fatty, but you know what? I've been waiting the whole day for this dish. The meat is so tender. I was a bit skeptical about the quail part, but it, it truly is much more tender than the chicken. The soup also has noodles in it and some vegetable. And the thing that it's famous for is the fact that it's sour, but the noodles, they just melt in your mouth. They're so tender. So it has a kick, love it. The other thing we have on the table to share are klachintas. We have one with cabbage, and then with brinza. Brinza is the classical filling. Everybody likes it. This is salted cottage cheese. This placenta is swimming in oil or butter, whatever they fried it in. And um, it also has uh, a poppy pastry at the base, so it just melts in your mouth. Mm. This is the much beloved traditional mamaliga ku brinza. This is um, fried egg sour cream, uh, uh, salty cottage cheese, meat, this is pork, and mamaliga, our traditional dish. 
I'm digging into my main dish. It's ribs. I didn't know it's gonna be just one big rib like this. So let me give it a taste. <laughs> That was really good. So the meat is also marinated and it's a bit on the spicy side, which I think is really good and cuts through the grease of the meat. Um, in Moldova, you don't really have a lot of spicy food, well, except this hot peppers. So I'm really glad I had it. Uh, it's a great meal. Let's have a look at the bill. So this is the Momaliga, three portions for 270 lei. This is my um, my meal, uh, the uh, ribs Moldova style, 90 lei. Oh no, 225 lei. Um, this is a salad from eggplant, bread, plecintas. This is the bottle of wine and then my soup. In total, for four people, and I can assure you we are super full, is 1,780 lei. That's it guys, it was an amazing evening, amazing day actually. It's evening now and we are going home. I am very full, very tired and full of impressions. I'll see you soon, bye-bye.